please turn in your Bibles this afternoon to the book of Psalms. I'd like to read from the first Psalm, Psalm 1, the first three verses. Psalm 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Word of God speaks about different places that we can be. Warns us about there are some places we better not be. And then it talks about some of the blessings that God bestows upon us when we are where we are supposed to be. Psalm 1, beginning with verse 1, the Word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Some great promises of bountiful blessings from God are in those verses. They are conditional promises. Uh, the first verse sets forth some particular places that we had better not be. It says in verse 1, Blessed is the man that, he first says, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. There are ungodly people that will give you counsel and there are some people that follow the counsel of the ungodly rather than following wise counsel and rather than following the counsel of God's holy word. The first thing the statement makes is, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. The second statement is, nor standeth in the way of sinners. He's going to talk about walking, he's going to talk about standing, then he's going to talk about sitting. That says, the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Sometimes the people of God want to have fellowship with the ungodly. Sometimes they want to do the things that the ungodly do. Sometimes they don't want to be around the people of God that are walking in the light. They don't want to be with those that love the Lord and so they withdraw themselves and they are not going to be in their presence and before long when they're not in the presence of those they ought to be in company with, they're going to begin to be in company with those that are ungodly. The way the Word of God describes them here, uh, they're ungodly and then the second thing he describes them at is, as is sinners. And then he says, Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now those that scorn are those that make fun of the word of God. They laugh at the word of God. They laugh at the people of God. They laugh at the ways of God. And the word of God says here, Don't be found sitting in the seat of the scornful. It doesn't mean you take his seat. Uh, you're not taking the place of the ungodly, you're not taking the place of sinners, and you're not taking place of the scornful. When he says you're not to, to be sitting in the seat of the scornful, he's talking about you're not to be in his house. You're not to be in his fellowship. The Word of God says that we're to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. And so when we are around those that are ungodly, when we're around those that are described in this verse as sinners, and we're, when we are around those that are scornful, we are not wise, and we're not going to receive the blessing that he's talking about here. One particular statement that's in the first verse that I want us to look at tonight, and that is, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. I rejoiced a lot in studying about different places that we might sit. And so the first thing that I want us to understand is that there are places we better not be found sitting. There are places that we ought to be sitting and there are places we ought not to be sitting. You will turn in your Bibles to begin with to Acts chapter 20. We'll find a man there that was not sitting in a good place. The Apostle Paul was preaching 
while he was preaching, and he preached all night, while he was preaching, there was a man that was sitting somewhere other than where he ought to be sitting. Most of you know where he was sitting. I want to encourage everybody here. There's, there's one, two, three, four. There are four rows in the front half of the church that are almost always vacant. And I want to encourage you to try to sit closer to the front than where you're sitting. I want you to all know that you will get much more out of the study of God's word every time if you're going to sit toward the front of the church. There's more accountability when you're sitting toward the front of the church. You're less likely to be distracted than sitting in the back of the church. And I talked about this one other time since I've been here. And there were several people who got very angry with me. And said, so, well, if you don't like where I sit, I just won't go to church there anymore. Well, you know, that's being a real childish, uh, uh, that's a childish way to react to that. All I'm trying to get across to you is there are places up front to sit. And if you want to get more out of the study of God's word, you're going to need to move closer to the front to have less distractions and to be able to know he's right there on top of me. I better pay attention. You get in the back row. I can't see half of you. I can't see hardly anybody towards the back. My eyes are bad. But the further back you sit, the more likely you are to be distracted. Enough said about that. This man that we're going to read about in Acts chapter 20, while the Apostle Paul was preaching, this man sat in the window. Now they were up on the third floor of this building, and while Paul was preaching, he was sitting over there in the window, probably the back window, I would suggest. It's not said in the Word of God, but look at the Word of God in Acts chapter 20, beginning in verse 7. We're talking about where we're sitting, and we're talking about we should not be sitting in the seat of the scornful. And I want you to know now that the Word of God makes a, a description here of somebody that was not sitting where he, he should have been sitting. In Acts chapter 20, beginning in verse 7, the Word of God says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. You might say, well now, my goodness, that, that man preached till midnight. That's a long time to be preaching. And indeed it was, but he knew he was leaving the next day. It was his last opportunity to preach to these people for a while. And so he preached till midnight. And then the scripture says, after it talks about him preaching till midnight, in verse 7, verse 8 says, And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. I'm not going to preach that, but there's a lot. That's a, that's a good text to preach right there. There were many lights. There were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. Verse 9, And there sat in a window a certain man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep, and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. You see, he was sitting in a dangerous place. You and I as the people of God, and I'm not talking about right now just literally sitting in a dangerous place. I'm not talking right now about sitting in a window, but you are sitting in a dangerous place when you're sitting in the seat of the scornful. You're sitting in a dangerous place when you're sitting with those that are living ungodly. So, I would encourage all of you to understand that death can take place. You can experience a soul death if you're not sitting where you ought to be sitting. If you're not having fellowship with the people of God and the things of God, you're sitting in a very dangerous place where you may fall out of the window and you may die. The Word of God says that's what happened to this man. Verse 10 says, And Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him, said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. Now, was that the end of the service at midnight, when the man fell out of the window? No, keep, keep reading now, verse 11. When he therefore was come up again, he had broken bread and eaten until he talked a long time, even till break of day, so he departed. So, 
he preached till midnight, the man fell out of the window, and then he came back and preached the rest of the night. He preached all night until the break of day. Verse 12 says, And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. They were greatly comforted because this man who had made a mistake by sitting in the window and fell out of the window and had died, the Apostle Paul, by the blessing of God, was able to bring the man back to life. His life was still in him the way Paul expressed it here. The point I'm trying to get across is there are those according to Psalm 1 that can sit in the seat of the scornful. And then the word of God in Acts 20 tells us about a man that sat in a window. And those are two of several places where we ought not to sit. There's a spiritual lesson here, not just talking about literally sitting in a window, talking about a spiritual lesson about where you need to be sitting. Now go with me to Luke chapter 14. There's another statement, if you'll back up in your Bibles to Luke chapter 14. There's a statement here about where we ought to be sitting. And there's a, a, in every one of these instances where the Word of God is talking about that we're going to be looking at tonight, in every one of the instances there are serious consequences, both good consequences and bad consequences that are determined by where are you sitting. Look now in uh, Luke chapter 14 beginning in verse 8. Luke chapter 14 beginning in verse 8. Jesus says, when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not, sit, so we're talking about sitting, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and, what are the next two words there? Sit down. Sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher, then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So, the main lesson in this passage, where it's talking about where a man is sitting, and Jesus is emphasizing, you better not try to sit in the highest place, but rather sit in the lowest place. And the whole lesson there is, you better sit in a place that you're showing your humility. Think about whenever we have feet washing, that is sitting in the lowest place when you get down and you watch the feet of your brethren. There are those who are not willing to sit in that lowest place of kneeling down and washing the feet of their brethren. But I want all of you to know our Lord and our Savior washed the feet of his apostles. And he said if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. And I would encourage everybody here to know not only in the feet washing service but every day of our lives may God help us to sit in an humble place and to be humble wherever we're sitting. Have, a, have an understanding that he that exalteth himself, he that tries to lift himself up into a high position of authority, that person is going to be brought low. But he that will humble himself, God's going to bless him to sit in a higher place. And that's what we're going to begin to look at now, is some higher places. We've been talking about places we better not sit. Don't go up there and try to make yourself the greatest one in, in some position. Don't try to sit up there, sit in the lowest place. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. And don't sit in the window in the house of God. Now go in back to Luke, Luke chapter 10. Back up four pages. Luke chapter 10. And all of you know about these two women. One of them's name is Martha and the other one's name is Mary. What was Martha doing? Somebody tell me. Everybody knows what Martha was doing. What was Martha doing? Oh, she was serving. And there's nothing wrong with serving. But at this particular time, there was something for her to do that was better than serving. The thing that she should have been doing was sitting where she was not sitting. So the Word of God makes it plain here in Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went, 
that he entered into, that's Jesus, entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also, look at the wording now, sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. That's a place all of us need to be sitting, is at the feet of Jesus. Every morning when I get up, I need to sit at the feet of Jesus. All during the day, I need to be sitting at the feet of Jesus. That doesn't mean I do nothing. It means that in all of my activity, in all of my work, and in everything that I do, I need to be sitting at the feet of of my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ. And that's what Mary was doing. Was sitting at the feet of Jesus. The scripture says. That she was sitting at his feet. And she heard his word. Verse 40 says. But Martha was coming about much serving. And came to him and said. Lord dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone. I bid her therefore. That she help me. Verse 41 says, And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art covered about with much, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Brethren, Mary chose to sit at the feet of Jesus, and all of us, in all of our lives every day, we need to pray, God, help me to know where I ought to sit. Help me to know where I ought not to sit. And help me to not sit among the seat of the scornful. Help me not to sit where I ought not to sit, but help me to sit at the feet of Jesus. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. There's a statement made here in Ephesians chapter 2 that the people of God who have been redeemed by the grace of God that by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, that we've been quickened or we've been born again. And in Ephesians chapter 2, after it talks about the condition we were in before God came to us, and the change that was made, that we were saved by grace, we were converted by God, and we were born again by God. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6, I want you to notice a place that we ought to be sitting and that we're blessed to be able to sit. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6, the Word of God says that God hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now I want you to notice two things about where we're sitting in that verse of Scripture. First of all, we're sitting together. That's with the people of God. We're sitting together. And then the scripture says we're not only sitting together and has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we're sitting together with the brethren, but we're also sitting together in Christ Jesus our Lord. He's talking about being in the kingdom of heaven, and that's a wonderful place to sit, is in the kingdom of heaven. Go with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 3 very quickly. Revelation chapter 3. Jesus, speaking to the churches, makes several promises to those that overcome. And one of the promises that Jesus makes to those that overcome is that they will be able to sit together with him, sit with Christ. Look in your Bibles in Revelation chapter 3. Listen please to the last two verses in Revelation chapter 3 verses 21 and 22. The word of God says to him that overcometh, will I grant to, what are the next three words there? I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. Now, this blessing is only for those who overcome. And these words are not spoken to the whole world. These words are spoken to the churches. And that's the reason in the next verse he says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. What does Jesus say to the churches? That when you overcome, then you will be able to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my Father in his throne. Now go with me to Matthew chapter 8 in closing. Look at Matthew chapter 8 when we sit down and some of you sometimes if you want to do a deep deep study I'll be glad to try to explain this to you later but all I'm going to do right now is just read these words for you to understand a beautiful truth that Jesus makes here in Matthew chapter 8 
Listen please to verses 11 and 12. Matthew chapter 8 beginning in verse 11. Jesus says, And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Did everybody hear that? Sitting in the kingdom of heaven. Sitting down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom, that's that natural kingdom, the Jewish kingdom. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What caused those children of the kingdom to be cast out of the kingdom? It was because they were sitting where they ought not to be sitting. Brethren, it's a great joy to sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of God. It's a great joy to, as Jesus said in Revelation 3, 21, it's a great joy to sit with Jesus in his throne, even as he is sat down with his father on his throne. Be careful where you're sitting. Examine yourself and see where you're sitting. And see if you're spending most of your time sitting where you ought to be sitting is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen.